Hello everyone and welcome to a quick um, brief series of videos about Anno 1404 which is mostly for the Something Awful thread which I will link in the video. Um, this is what you encounter when you start up a new game. Um, I'm just looking around the island there. You can zoom way out and go around the island or you can zoom way in to look at the buildings in detail. I'm just looking at some seagulls flying around there. They're flying around quite a lot. Um, this building in front of me is the um, small warehouse. It's the basic building you get, and it's filled with a few items uh, which are useful. Mostly ones we'll be concentrating on will be peasant ones at the beginning of the game. Up here also shows the resources that you have on that specific island. And if you click on the warehouse and you click and hold on an item in the warehouse you can drag it up there so you can monitor specific um, items on that building. This up here shows the fertility of the island. Uh, this one can make cider and hemp and also another one of your choice. I should go further into fertilities at a later point in another video. Uh, if you click that button then you can see the actual resources on the island which on this one we have six stone and five iron and if you click those then you will zoom to um, those specific resources. Now if you see I'm indicating an area which is likely places where I'll probably set up um, an industrial sector, sector rather for creating um, iron and stone using buildings. You can also rename an island by clicking on your uh, warehouse and clicking up on the name there. I was trying to think of an amusing name, but uh, sadly I couldn't think of one, so I just left this as Goldford. Typically I name islands, uh, especially resources ones, after what they're doing, like uh, bread and beer. It's typically an island that makes lots of bread and beer. The left side of the screen is uh, a bar that indicates various uh, things that are happening within the game. Uh, you can scroll that up and down. The top part is indicators of important things that are happening the bottom bar indicates objectives for quests and whatnot that you're doing. Uh, if you saw a moment ago I'm doing the Master Builder Main Objective Quest uh, scenario here. Uh, you can just extend this or de-extend it as much as you like and create as much space as you like. I typically keep them balanced for uh, multiple quests or multiple announcements. Now if you saw I click the large house looking icon in the bottom right which is the building display these are all the buildings I can make currently. Some of these require a certain amount of peasants, which I do not have at currently, so I cannot. You can also right click anywhere in the game world and show this um, minion as well by clicking the house button in the middle there, which also has other things. What you can also do is pick one of the items from the build men menu and drop them there on your quick menu. So you can just right click and then immediately quick click on whichever thing you want. You can also drag these down here to the main uh, hockey bars. Uh, so there's Fisherman's Wharf, just there, and it's also on the main menu bar there. However, I don't need those, so you can just click and drag them away. You can also do exactly the same thing with the resource bar if I'm in the, up in the top left, um, the same way as you're taking them away or putting them there. The information bar on the right is showing that we had uh, new buildings, but we've already looked at those, so uh, you can right click to remove that message. Now, all buildings require a certain amount of items to make, and these woodcutters require uh, two, wood we two wood each and some gold. No, sorry, two tools each and some gold. So I click those there. Now, all buildings that create resources need to be connected to a warehouse by a road. Uh, this doesn't necessarily mean to be the uh, one on the dock. Uh, you can build specific ones. Now this is the production display of each building. They can go anywhere from 0 to 100% product, uh, productivity. 100% uh, is obviously best. With woodcutters that means many trees have to be around them. I'm also going to build some uh, fishing wharfs. I'm just looking at the area there. Fishing wharfs obviously produce fish which your, uh, your uh, people can eat which is always good because they will need that, otherwise they will leave. Each of these fishermen's huts requires um, five wood and two tools. At the moment, uh, tools are hard to come by because we do not have any method of producing them, but uh, later I shall get on uh, to how you actually do that. Now, 
you need to create an area to actually uh, allow peasants to live and that's based on this marketplace which is a large area there and all houses needed to be need to be connected to a marketplace by a road um, I'm just creating a typical setup I use um, I'm not sure how effective it is I read about it on a website once and it's basically all I use now so there we go I'm dropping down some peasant houses which require two wood each and I'm just creating some extra roads for when I'm planning to expand and build more houses when you build peasant housing peasant housing uh, peasants will continually move in until all the houses are full of peasants uh, just building small roads and building more houses I always like to build quite a lot of houses because all they cost is two wood and wood is really easy to get with enough wood cutters although I think I run quite low soon um, I'm just planning mostly out uh, my setup here um, I usually build a large setup with the roads all planned out and then uh, put the buildings in afterwards just connecting that road up there for no real reason now up here is the tax display uh, when it's in the green um, peasants and other citizens and all your population will move in all these different uh, tax brackets will uh, tax people more heavily if you tax them too much then they will leave up here displays the amount of gold you get from tax from all of that population type which is peasants currently we want them in the green so they move in uh, we're just looking at their things that they desire uh, the first one of those we just looked at is uh, need for company which is marketplace they need to be connected to that to the road as I said and anywhere in that area that I um, indicated a moment ago was um, anywhere a house could be built and be satisfied by the need for company if you have um, if you had a uh, road connecting to it. The second thing was fish uh, which we've already got set up and I need some more wood so I've built another woodcutter here. Now this woodcutter is only 90% efficient you could click the button I was indicating to um, uh, increase the Your resources around there to make been it awarded a new status. to increase the um, efficiency you carry on like or this. you'll I, soon be running a metropolis on a or North is talking, or you could uh, just select the uh, building menu and select trees, which are much cheaper to build individually. And if you throw a few of those around a woodcutter, then typically that will uh, push it up to a um, uh, higher efficiency. And during that, my city upgraded to another status, and we're just looking at all the different levels and the population requirements for those. Uh, that has also given us access to new buildings such as the uh, cider farm, the chapel, uh, the fountain and the flower bed. The last two are just things to make everything look prettier so they're not really too essential for the moment and they cost gold so while we do have quite a lot of gold at the moment, 50,000 gold can dr run dry very quickly in this game. In addition to the actual buildings becoming available, uh, your uh, population will actually desire these things so currently they would they desire uh, a need for faith which is built by the chapel and a need for cider which is the cider farm which we'll have to do now, as you can see this is a large area of influence every building uh, every house rather built in the influence area of that will um, have the need for faith um, qualified not qualified um, I can't remember the word sorry uh, I'll remember that and put it in an annotation you can also rotate the orientation of any building by pressing the uh, full stop or period key on your keyboard, which I was doing there. Now in this uh, building setup I have here, I uh, have it there. Just creating a road to make sure that's connected to the other side, because as I mentioned, it needs to be connected by roads to all sides. And that point is the only one that connects it to the set of housings currently on the top right of the screen. I'm um, just looking at those. I'm just checking out the. Uh, the wood supply. I'm um, running quite low on wood, those aren't really doing much. Now these have got an indicator that the fish isn't being picked up. Um, one of these small warehouses there, they Citizens only are send now out also living in your city. They only send out one market cart and there's currently five buildings yes. there. I so always knew you'd lead this city to prosperity. Everyone must keep talking over me. 
but those uh, five structures aren't very good to have only one item, uh, one market cart picking up all of those things for the moment. So very soon I will get around to rectifying that. And my, my city is upgraded to another level, which means citizens can move in. Uh, currently I do not want that to happen though, because Your when they upgraded it, when they upgrade Your their house... settlement wants for nothing. Fabulous! You Thank must you, Lord explore Lord. the nearby islands so that your town can continue to grow. This ship should serve you well for that purpose. Yes, thank you, I should do that soon. As I was saying, each of these houses uh, requires two resources to upgrade. One of them is wood and one is tools. And both are kind of limited at the moment, so what I've done is stop them automatically upgrading. Now I can either click the uh, grey button I am indicating right now, or the button a few moments ago which was in the top right of each house when you click it. As you can see I'm just highlighting it there, um, just checking out the resources they need. Citizens require uh, two more additional resources currently than peasants. One is linen garments um, and obviously they still need the same resources that peasants did which is uh, the need for company. Uh, the need for faith and the need for cider. As I was saying, one of the resources they need now are linen and spices, which I shall get onto when we start talking about the Orient. These are the new structures we can create now that we are at the citizen level, which is the hemp farm, the weaver's hut, the stonemason's uh, quarry thing, and um, stone roads. Um, obviously, the weaver's hut creates linen which is one of the things that the citizens uh, desire. I've just noticed that these fishermen's huts still aren't having their goods picked up properly because there is only one marketplace there, or small warehouse with the one card. I could upgrade that to another one, uh, but I do not have any stone currently, so instead I'm going to build a small market building uh, which will send out another market cart to those uh, fire structures. I was just checking that woodcutter's building just in case it um, lost any productivity, but it didn't. The small market buildings can also be upgraded to a large one, but that also requires stone, which I do not have. So we'll have to get some quarries up and running quite soon. Now if you remember, Lord Northborough promised to sell us a ship, so I'm clicking on the mini-map over to his island. Welcome. One of your plants has stopped producing goods. Uh, that's just the fishermen's uh, that we You'll were looking at. You'll have to at. shell out a small amount yourself. It's offering to sell us a ship for 3,500 gold coins. We have almost 50,000, so we have plenty of gold. So we're definitely going to buy a good that deal ship. There. Now with this ship, we can, um, or I rather prefer to immediately I trade with no Lord Northbrook. to a fair deal. And buy all his uh, tools and all his wood, which he'll sell us. Those will repopulate over time. Uh, I'd but they're be very happy to help you. But they're very useful at the beginning of the game. So I'll buy those and send that ship over to the my Emperor island. The Emperor would be a happy man indeed if all his vassals were as decent as you. That ship will head over to my bill, uh, to my island now. Now, you can also left click and hold on the small ship icon there on the top of the ship and drag that to your hotkey. And every time you click it, uh, it will highlight the ship so you can move it as you will. If you double click it, then uh, it will go. Uh, it will zoom your view straight through that ship. I'm just zooming in, looking at these guys wheeling some barrels around of what I assume are cider. Um, I'm not sure where they're taking them. Bring me news of His Majesty the Emperor. That's one of Lord Northra's trading ships. You can uh, sell your own goods if you require. I will get further into that at a later video, though. Uh, right now, I am deciding to build some uh, cider farm, and I'm trying to find a good location that I'd like for it. I generally plan things out between farming and industrial uh, areas of my island. Um, I think there's a good spot. And unfortunately this video is coming to a close, uh, so next time we will uh, create some cider farms and move on from there. I hope to see you soon. Thank you. Goodbye.